Hello and welcome! My name is Meeples, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at Day Tripper by twin brothers Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba, colors by Dave Stewart, and lettering by Sean Conant. This book was published by Vertigo in 2011 and is recommended for mature readers. I had previously read this book, but no longer had it logged on Goodreads, so I'm not exactly sure if it was part of that one comic class I took in university or if it was recreational reading. Either way, I did have positive feelings about this book, although those did not survive this reread. Content notes for lots of character death, magical black man trope, female nudity, exotifying women of color, and young cousins kiss. From Sao Paulo, Brazil, twins Fabio Moon and Gabriel Bob began self-publishing together in 1993. Their first miniseries was entitled Sunflower and the Moon. Since then, they have contributed to a number of comics together and separately, including BPRD 1947, Autobiographics, and Casanova. They have been published internationally. Dave Stewart is a very well-known colorist. He apparently won the Eisner Award for coloring 10 times in the past 17 years. Besides being a letterer, that definitely exists. I couldn't find out anything more about Sean Knott. Keywords that this book brought to mind, biological family, death, new life, suburban, listless, quarter, and midlife crises. The Goodreads description is as follows. Meet Bras de Oliva Domingos. The miracle child of the world-famous Brazilian writer Bras spends his days penning other people's obituaries and his nights dreaming of becoming a successful author himself, writing the end of other people's stories while his own has barely begun. But on the day that life begins, would he even notice? Does it start at 21 when he meets the girl of his dreams, or at 11 when he has his first kiss? Is it later in life when his first son is born, or earlier when he might have found his voice as a writer? Each day in Brass's life is like a page from a book. Each one reveals the people and things who have made him who he is, his mother and father, his child and his best friend, his first love and the love of his life. Like all great stories, each day has a twist he'll never see coming. In Day Tripper, the Eisner Award-winning twin brothers Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba tell a magical, mysterious, and moving story about life itself, a hauntingly lyrical journey that uses the quiet moments to ask the big questions." End quote. The bones, as it were, of the story are pretty strong, and it is obvious why this book was so popular back when adult graphic novels perhaps felt a little bit more than on the ground. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. The art is good, the colors are lush, and it was overall, once again, a surprisingly fast read. Am I ahead again yet? Probably not. It does make me think of a fairly drawn-out Twilight Zone episode, without the aesthetic, with the story exploring the repercussions of Brass dying in various dramatic ways at various points in his life. The treatment of gender was the first yellow flag when I cracked open this book for a second time. Gender is a binary, but the treatment of women is pretty subpar. Not the worst, but we definitely fell into the women getting naked a lot more than the men trap. There's also a bit of the character initially dating one type of woman and then ending up married over and over again as the plot gets fairly redundant at this point to another type of woman, but more on that next. Heterosexual reproduction became an overwhelming focal point fairly quickly between Brass's own epic birth story and the many of his reincarnations focusing on the birth of his child. Moving along to racial representation, I will of course add the caveat that while I do understand Brazil to be a fairly diverse country, I am also under the impression that the way that people talk about race in Brazil is fairly different from my own context. There is the distinct possibility that my reading of race in this book is off due to context clues that went totally over my head. So this is my fairly American understanding. The main character of the story and 99% of his family appear to be of European descent. Brass has one recurring black work friend who tends to philosophize at him, be in service to advance Brass's life, and definitely takes many boxes for the magical black man trope, in my humble opinion. And circling back to the different types of women that enter Brass's life romantically, the first part of the book does focus a bit more on Brass as a younger man in which he dates slash lusts after a couple of women who are much darker than he is. These women are generally mysterious, exotic, and maybe magical. About a third of the way into the book, we start going through Brass's life post his eventual marriage, 
over and over and over again. And each time he is married to a woman with a similar skin tone to him, who dresses more conservatively, and who lacks almost any personality beyond being devoted to bras. The dichotomy made me extremely uncomfortable, to say the least. It also didn't help that the only time Bras is murdered, it's by a black man in what I can only assume the book would describe as a, quote, fit of madness. As far as disability versus ability goes, it does tend to fall into the able-bodied until you are suddenly dead side of things. I was glad we got at least a few short scenes where our main character does live to ripe old age. He does sometimes struggle with brain tumors, but besides being rather melancholic, the premise of the story seems to be a man left adrift by the total lack of any problems, physical or otherwise, in his life. This also meant there was no analysis of class. So yeah, going with two stars here. Kind of sad I returned to this book. Might have been nice to keep the vaguely positive feelings I had before. I'm glad my standards get to be so much higher now. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders. Which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.